is Frontier Ag and Turf, a dealership for John Deere Farm Equipment at Cannon Falls, Minnesota. My name is Randy Nikolai. Uh, I'm a store manager here and I've actually worked at this facility around 32 years, all in farm equipment business, different brands at different times. 32 years ago, uh, technology was not nothing, anything like today. Uh, we sold Massey Ferguson combines at the time. Uh, very little was automatic. Just began having electric header controls that would have your bean head follow the contour of the soil so you didn't have to sit there and run a lever manually. That was about the only thing we had automatic back in that time frame and, and uh, there were glimpses of combines automatically adjusting back around 87 that we just saw articles about but nothing was in production yet. Uh, automatically adjusting the combine would realize it and at that time all they were really doing is trying to clean the sample of grain so as it came across the, the chaffer and the sieves it would determine whether there was foreign material falling through them and adjust to clean that up make sure that stuff went over the top out the back and only kernels of corn fell through that chaffer and sieve and go to the grain tank um, and that was, like I said, just a, a thought at that time, a glimpse of future maybe. At that time we sold combines, corn head, bean head, all together about $50,000. Not the largest size, the next to the largest at that time was about 50000 A lot of electrical sensors, adjustments from in the cab started to evolve in that mid-80s time frame. Uh, just continually got stronger and stronger toward that direction of more automatic, easier to adjust from right inside the seat of the cab, so on and so forth. And about mid-90s was the earlier parts of global positioning receivers that we saw in combines. Uh, just previous to that we had some yield estimators that weren't very accurate and all they could do is kind of estimate the amount of yield. About 95 they came out with a system that was more accurate in telling you what the moisture was as soon as it hit the combine, you could tell the moisture and, and a more accurate and uh, calibratable yield measurement. So you could be pretty darn accurate. Uh, I think the first one I sold, the guy was just shocked when he got all done harvesting. He knew how many bushels and his combine told him within 1% or 1.5. It's uh, probably around $320,000 just for the combine itself. With the equipment that it has, it's not the largest one we make. Um, and you could uh, easily add another hundred thousand dollars to it for heads to make it actually harvest a crop. We have a, a head for soybeans and that'll actually cut the crop right at the ground level slightly above and take the whole stem of a soybean plant which is roughly 24 inches tall maybe 30 and put that whole stem through the combine the harvesting machine and that'll strip the kernels out of the pods and then clean kernels away from all the the pods and broken plant branches, whatever might be through there. Other option in our area is corn and soybeans, so then we need a corn head which actually just strips the ear off the stalk and, and the ear of corn goes through the combine and again it gets threshed off the cob and, and then separate kernels from cobs and so on and so forth. Uh, bean heads roughly $38,000, $40,000. Corn head, depending on size, could be anywhere from seventy. dollars to, well, if they're big ones, $100,000. It's got large capacity. Uh, we'll handle, uh, if you get into crops that are maybe a little green and a little tough, a few weeds, or sometimes we have soybeans get ripe, the pods are dry, but the stem itself is green. This combine handles that. It doesn't really uh, fight to get it through there. So we've got great threshing and cleaning capacity. Uh, also has yield monitoring equipment in it, and the ability to add other components to record yields all the way through the field. And, th and those are items that we just plug in here at the dealership when it goes to the farmer, if that's what he desires to have. Uh, and today I'd say 30 to 40 percent of our farmers are probably using that technology to create a map so they know what yield is where. This component will show you uh, what your yields are while you're harvesting and actually it'll paint a map on the screen. I don't think we can come up with too much, but here's a, an actual map. If the combine were moving here, we'd see color back here. 
and the color would change depending on the yield. Um, actually, this one's actually more accurate. And as yield gets created, uh, you get different colors, and a, and a customer can actually watch that while it's happening. Here we would load in what farm we're doing, uh, actually who we're doing it for, the farm, a field name. So at some point when we go back to look for this information, we have to know where we were. So we need to put that in there while we're doing it. Uh, we can load conditions of what the temperature was that day, whether it was a windy day. Uh, for some applications that's necessary, such as spraying. If it's windy and you put in there that it's windy and somehow you drifted over and caused some damage to the next door neighbors, you know why. It was in here and told you it was windy that day. The feeder house. Your, your heads will hang on these hooks, fit tight against the front of this frame. All the crop from the head gets conveyed to the center, goes underneath this chain, and right inside the combine. And that's where it just gets fed and pushed into that uh, back uh, threshing area that I showed you. Most of the combines today have a bolt right down here. This front plate tips this way and that way to follow contour of the ground because the heads we have today Many are 20 feet wide for corn heads minimum. Uh, well, there's one size smaller, but majority are 20 feet wide, and bean heads are up to 40 feet wide now, and needing that contour adjustment is important. We talked inside the cab about sensors that tell you how much crop might be feeding back through the combine. This is an opportunity here where I can show you some of those sensors. There's one on each side of this elevator, and as, as material goes past here, it can measure how much is in there. And if you're recycling too much through this area, you're going to end up with some kernel damage and loss of performance in the combine. So that's why we've got a sensor that tells us that we're doing that so we can make some adjustment and have less of that, improve our quality and performance. Behind here is an auger running across the combine, brings it all over here. This elevator takes it up and drops it into the grain tank and fills that grain tank. Pull out this ladder. and head up the stairs. We've got a large fuel tank back here. A pretty good size opening. And uh, every day that's got to be filled. And if you put in a long day, you might have to fill it twice. Um, engine compartment's all back in here pretty much Kind of covered up with all the, the temperature, heat, and everything uh, getting blowed out this side of the combine. Air filter is rather large. Switches so you can turn lights on inside the combine. Uh, also, you can adjust your chaffer and your sieve from back here uh, along with in the cab right next to the seat.